Daytona. Where does it come from? This may be the single most talked about, written about, and obsessed over watch on Earth. The Rolex Cosmograph Daytona, since the name was first applied to a Rolex chronograph in 1963, has had an incredible journey from zero to hero. Unpopular at first, the Daytona has today established itself not only on the vintage market, where sky-high prices and broken records have become routine, but also as a current production model. A new steel Daytona on a bracelet is so in demand that it is generally simply unavailable, at least at this price. And the wait for one is measured not in days, weeks, or months, but in years. Hi guys, welcome back to another video. This week, I have decided that we're going to be talking about watches. Finally, if you have been following my first luxury for a while, you know that I have asked you guys if you wanted to see more watch contents or handbags or jewelry, you let me know. So definitely some of you said watches. So today I have decided to share a very iconic piece with you guys and really start the conversation on whether or not it's worth buying a Rolex Daytona. I do have a very beautiful Daytona here. This is the two-tone Daytona with steel and yellow gold and this is actually my husband's watch and today we are going to be taking a very close look at this beautiful timepiece because there's a lot to be talked about as this watch is a very very popular and iconic model by Rolex and its popularity has been on the rise in the last couple of years especially after the actor Paul Newman's Daytona has auctioned off at I think 14 million dollars this watch has once again became one of the the most popular timepieces that a lot of people are talking about. I am sure if you love luxury, you must have heard of Rolex, no matter what model it is. It could be a day dress watch, or it could be a chronograph, it could be a GMT. There's a, a variation and there's quite a collection of timepieces that Rolex makes. But today we're gonna be talking about Rolex Daytona first. Let's go ahead and take a look at this very popular and iconic timepiece by Rolex. and. I have quite some information to share with you and then we can determine whether or not you think it's a great idea to buy a Rolex Daytona. So believe it or not, this timepiece has only been around for half a century, about 50 plus years. Yes, the timepiece actually has a track record of 55 years on the market. The first thing I think you guys need to know is the name, Daytona. Where does it come from? If you are a speed or fast car lover, you probably know it is inspired by the Daytona racetrack in Florida.
let's basically take a look at the watch and see what's on the watch really because some of you might be interested to know. Let's start from outside and in and you can see that the bracelet is a very famous oyster bracelet and this is a two-tone watch obviously so it's yellow gold with stainless steel and this watch also has one of the newer buckles which is the deployment buckle and this is how you open it very very nice it has one of the newer design mechanisms that is different than the previous generations and you can put it in and out very easily and lock it these are the screws on the links for you to remove or add and you can obviously size the bracelet to your liking and now we're going to take a look at the main dial of the watch First of all, the yellow ring on the outside is the bezel and on there is a cosmograph that basically helps you to compute your speed and everything you need, basically the function that comes with this timepiece. And then we have the main dial, which is the black dial, and oftentimes the Daytonas offers a variety range of different dials, sometimes there's gold, there's different materials. And then you can also see there are three subdials that's laying on the inside of the watch. That is basically the second minute and hour hand. So the markers you're looking at is the hour marker and this one is luminous. And oftentimes, depending on the specs of the watch, you, you will be able to see either in diamonds or other different materials, but that is the hour marker. We also have the minute hand and hour hand. The longer is the minute hand, the shorter is the hour hand. And we also have a second hand in the middle. The second hand is at the six o'clock on the sub dial that is moving. Now I'm going to show you how to utilize the chronograph on this timepiece. And first of all, if I turn the watch to the side, the three metal pieces you see on the right side, in the middle we have the screw down crown, which is also a Rolex signature, and it's triple sealed, and you can see the details there. Underneath the crown logo, there are three dots right there. So the functionality of the crown is to wind the watch and to set, to set the time. And then we have the top pusher, which is used to start and stop the chronograph. And then the bottom pusher is to reset. All of the pushers are also screwed down, so when I need to utilize it, I do have to unscrew it. So I'm doing that right now. And I'm going to demonstrate to you how the chronograph actually works. So you start with a pusher, count time starts, and you can see that the chronograph second hand start moving on the dial of the watch, and that's when it started to count. Once it starts running, you are able to see that the coordinated subdial will also start calculating. And this is a visual graph from Rolex.com to really show how the chronograph works. Isn't it amazing? And now let's take a look at some of their current lineup for the Daytona. And there are six variations, I believe, that's offered on the official website right now. And here are them. So take a look and let me know in the comment section what's your favorite. Okay, so next let's talk about the suitability in terms of whether women wear it better or men wear it better. And when you first heard of Daytona, you're probably like, ah, it's a masculine watch. It's probably one of those watches that a lot of men buy. And you're absolutely right. It's definitely some of the top choices Swiss watches out there tend to go and want to collect. With the fashion trend change along these years, I do believe I have seen quite a lot of ladies starting wearing you know, different styles of Daytonas. And obviously in the past 55 years, the brand has brought out so many varieties and different designs of the watch. So I think there's quite a huge range of suitability. So I think this watch has really become kind of the signature look of Rolex, even though some of you might disagree. I know there are a lot of other timepieces from Rolex that is very known as well. But as far as the Daytona goes, I personally have seen it more commonly 
wearing on men and a lot of women are also picking these styles up with their jewelry stack and all of that so i do think it is quite suitable for both men and women depending on you know your style with that said there's also a different price range for different styles of watches the most popular one and the hardest to get is probably still the all stainless steel entry-level daytonas because the price for them uh, retail wise is very very good and it's very affordable so a lot of times people tend to go for that and also the brand had did a lot of innovation on redesigning the dial so all the details have been really changed up quite a lot throughout the years so it's a lot more acceptable to the vast majority of the people that's on the market to buy this watch daytona is offered in 40 millimeter that could be a restriction for people when they choose this timepiece but we know that watches are getting bigger for ladies and watches are getting bigger for men and really depending on your taste in timepieces and if you like something that makes statement and if you're someone who's really cool and edgy i can totally see you wear this timepiece for me personally i probably will pick one of those that has that is a stainless steel even though i know and i understand there's a very high demand it's very very hard to get but i totally see myself wearing a uniform watch the mixed gold is really low but I do think it works better on a different complexion if I were to choose one I'll probably pick the panda because it is one of the newer launches for the Daytona style and it is a anniversary launch I think after the first one was introduced 10 years ago before the new one was reintroduced again so it is quite meaningful and I have seen it on people and I do think it's just so classy either on a man or a woman it would work perfectly this may be the single most talked about, written about, and obsessed over watch on Earth. The Rolex Cosmograph Daytona, since the name was first applied to a Rolex chronograph in 1963, has had an incredible journey from zero to hero. Unpopular at first, the Daytona has today established itself not only on the vintage market, where sky-high prices and broken records have become routine, but also as a current production model. A new steel Daytona on a bracelet is so in demand that it is generally simply unavailable, at least at this price. And the wait for one is measured not in days, weeks, or months, but in years. So pricing, you know, there's quite a range in the Daytona styles from the stainless steel and all the way up to a full gold. And sometimes there's even like gemstone embellishments. So really depending on what you're choosing for, just like any jewelry, you can choose a plain gold or you can go all the way up to all the pave pieces. There's quite a range for us to choose from. And I think, you know, one of the basic pieces like a full stainless steel or mixed gold is a great place to start and once you have it you know you can then see how well you can incorporate it into your everyday lifestyle and maybe you'll get another one who knows because there are so many to choose from and from the investment point of view I mean some of you might correct me and say none of these luxury is an investment piece but I am talking about some pieces that tend to hold the value very very well over periods of time so when we talk about investment we are talking about increasing in value in terms of investment not the traditional investment that you're talking about where it pays you dividends and obviously luxury is kind of a liability versus like an investment but in terms of value all of these timepieces really tend to go up you know in the next few years plus all of these watch manufacturers have a very limited amount of release of timepieces every year so it is limited at the end of the day so if you're into limited edition watches might be your thing because you never know which model is going to become the next Paul Newman that is going to be worth tens of millions of dollars for a fact the manufacturers are not manufacturing these pieces forever and they tend to do like different changes on little details so they might manufacture this for a certain amount of years and then they will introduce a new style and some style just tends to do better than the other but overall since the price for luxury goods goes up anyway I do think it's a great choice to invest your money in one of these timepieces so that is my two cents about this beautiful time 
time piece. I don't know if you have any in mind that you have purchased already or you're thinking to purchase, but definitely I would love to know if you guys think Daytona is a great time piece to buy. Definitely type it away in the comment section below because I do read all the comments. And if you have any other questions, you can also find my first luxury on Instagram over here. And I look forward to connecting with you guys. Thank you again for watching today's video. I hope to see you on the next one, guys. Bye.